what are some key principles, uh, philosophies, if you like, um, to yeah, an athlete development for team sport athletes? Yeah, for sure. And and the first thing is to to have a philosophy, and it's one of the the first questions I ask when we have interviews in the various organisations I work with. I'm, I'm interested in the person's philosophy, and then really an organisation should have a philosophy or an approach. Many different names for it. Like, like for example, uh, in Arsenal Academy, uh, and we published it, it's the Arrow approach. So, first of all, we had to listen and understand the, the football philosophy. And there's a strong one there in the club, originated through Arsene Wenger, lived by people that worked with him. And it's they, they basically want highly technical players, composed on the ball, ability to, to have do exciting combination play, high speed players, high speed repeatability players. So once you learn what the technical sport philosophy is, then you can create the the athletic development philosophy. How long did it take uh, to to create that philosophy? And then also um, how hard was it to sort of maintain the standards uh, from a consistency point of view where you kept sticking to it before it became yeah. a habit? Good, good question. Because the short answer is it took one hour and the longer answer, it took nine years because it's yeah, reviewed, wow. it evolves, yeah. it's added to, and everybody should do it. And I think they'll enjoy it. And a lot of people are doing it now. We're not the only ones. Um, but get people in a room, right? Ask the question, what sort of players do we want to develop? Now, how are we going to develop them? And I can remember the meeting where it appeared and the doctor came up with the arrow once we described what the CEO, Ivan Gazizis, wanted. He wanted players ready quickly and efficiently. Okay, let's listen and let's draw that up. Then the four pillars of it appeared from people there. Coaches were in the room, so technically they were there at the creation of this. Um, they had an input to this. Now you've got buy-in. And at the end of that hour, you, you've only a little drawn. Now it's not much, but... Now we can go and fill out the, the the next few pages. And you mentioned the um, you know listening to the technical coaches and the operatives and 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 how important it was for for players to be fast and repeat at repeat speed. Um, so taking that information to account, did that mean that we're going to add in an extra speed session here once a fortnight, or we're going to prioritize speed at the start of sessions? Like how, how did just sort of action in that philosophy, yeah. I guess. So a, a very important thing to me is making sure we've windows to develop players. And I've been in many different organizations and at different stages of the season, when pressure comes on, coaches might go, oh, no, no, we won't do speed today. No, no, we won't do, I need to work on, on technical, etc." And the law this will be that bit of give and take. But in a large organization where there's teams from under nine to under 23, 220 odd players, many different coaches, many different support people. One of the important things is to agree with le senior leadership where we are the windows that we physically develop the player. What are some of the uh, real perks when you do develop an athlete from such a young age from a physical athlete development point of view? Oh, yeah. you, um, you can't go wrong investing in young people. And I've just seen it work too many times. Like, the example of Irish rugby in the, as I said, in the 90s, not good. Down at the bottom of the five nations, as it was then, six nations. Um, then academies were in place. Long term player development pathway was introduced. Uh, training age grew. Education in the schools happened. Collaboration with the schools. Regular access to the players. More intense access at the older academy age. And then you've got these players coming through, like like Johnny Sexton, like Sean O'Brien. Then the, the next generation come through, and the next generation, and it just flows. You mentioned the importance of uh, integrating uh, and you've, throughout the whole time the a holistic program, how essential it is, not just looking at the lens of the physical, but the tactical, the te technical, the psychological. So that component of getting the fitness work in with you know, ball in hand or ball in foot uh, and with the coaches, is, is that a matter of... Um, how, like for the athletes that perhaps need to work on their aerobic capacity and need that foundational 
aerobic development? Is it using objective markers like GPS to give them feedback to improve the, with with the soccer drills, or do you sort of just top them up with the work? Perhaps if they're they're not doing the work in the skills, so you top them up after. How do you sort of approach that? Love, lovely area, and from top down, one of the pillars of player development is called in Arsenal is most efficient mover, and a subhead heading of that is football fitness. And a very clever strategy of the academy manager per Matasaker is to highlight the all in football in red. And the message there is all of us are responsible, not just the coach, not just the fitness coach. You know how it is if a team isn't fit, oh, that fitness coach isn't good enough or about strength conditioning or whatever. He emphasized yeah. we're all responsible for it. nutrition, psychology, operations. So we all need to get that player to be a most efficient mover in the, the pillar.